Hi, welcome to another video. So, a new coding agent framework, or rather, a massive configuration for one, is being talked about, and I thought we had to talk about this as well. This one is called Oh My Open Code. If you live in the terminal, the name obviously reminds you of Oh My Zish, and the concept is basically the same. It takes the vanilla open code CLI and injects it with a ridiculous amount of steroids, plugins, and configurations. The problem we have right now with AI coding tools, whether it's Cursor, Windsurf, or the standard CLI agents, is that you are usually locked into a mono-model workflow. You pick one brain. You're either driving with Claude Opus, or you're driving with GPT 5.2. But if you watched my reviews on those models, you know they have very specific strengths and weaknesses. Gemini 3 Pro is an absolute beast at front end, but it tends to hallucinate logic in complex back ends. Opus 4.5 is the king of overall coding, reasoning, and debugging, but it burns through your wallet if you use it for simple documentation lookups. And GPT 5.2 is great for architecture, but gets weirdly stubborn about formatting. Usually, you have to manually copy-paste code between them to get the best result. Oh My Open Code tries to solve this by acting as an orchestrator. It treats your main agent not as the coder, but as the engineering manager. They call this main agent Sisyphus, which typically runs on Opus 4.5. Instead of doing everything itself, Sisyphus delegates tasks to specialized sub-agents running on different models. If it needs to build a UI component, it spins up a front-end engineer agent that uses Gemini 3 Pro. If it needs to read documentation or search GitHub for implementation details, it calls a librarian agent running on Sonnet 4.5. If you need a sanity check on architecture, it pings an Oracle agent running GPT 5.2. It runs these asynchronously in the background. So while one agent is writing your React components, another is figuring out the database schema. It also addresses a massive pain point I have with current agents. They are lazy. They love to write comments about rest of code and quit. This tool has a todo continuation enforcer that forces the model to finish the file before it's allowed to stop. Plus, it gives the agents access to LSP, language server protocol, so they can actually run their own diagnostics and fix syntax errors before they even show you the code. Now, a bit of a reality check here. This isn't a magical free tool. Since it orchestrates multiple models, you need access to the APIs or subscriptions from these providers. You can possibly also use things like OpenRouter or Requesty, I believe. If you want the full Dream Team setup, you are burning tokens across Anthropic, Google, and OpenAI simultaneously. It claims to save costs by offloading simple tasks to cheaper models like Haiku or Flash but the setup complexity is definitely higher than just installing VS Code. It is very much a tool for power users who aren't afraid of a config file, but the potential for productivity is huge. So, I set it up to see if having a team of AI agents is actually better than just having one really smart one. Now, let me show it to you in action. First to install it, you'd have to run the bunks oh my open code install command and it will ask you questions about if you have subscriptions for things like claude gemini gpt etc and it will get everything set up for you you'd have to authenticate open code with the subscription if you use them otherwise you can use the apis as well for google gemini it is kind of cool because it uses the anti-gravity rate limits which can often be more generous. Anyway, it will get some MCPs, or Model Context Protocols, 
along with Context 7, Web Search, and GREP MCPs set up and configured. These don't always require additional APIs, so that's good. Now, you can just go ahead and start open code, and you should see the Sisyphus agent. This is where you can give it your prompt, and it can do the task. You generally don't need to tell it to use some specific kind of subagent, as it will automatically detect and use the subagents it can. You can also change the main Sisyphus model to use something other than Opus if you prefer. All right, let's ask it to do something and have a look at how it all works. So, I'm starting in the open code terminal here, and you can see it's currently set to Sisyphus Claude Sonnet 4. But I want the full power of Opus, so I'll hit slash models, search for Opus, and select Claude Opus 4.5, latest, Anthropic for Sisyphus. That's the brain we want running the show. Now, I'll type in our benchmark prompt. Build me a movie tracker app that uses the TMDB API. Make sure it uses a minimalist aesthetic. It should also have a Git tracker, like View, to show how many movies one has watched in a year. You see that little Oh My Open Code banner flash by. That means Sisyphus is on steroids, as they say. Immediately, Sisyphus starts thinking. It breaks down the request. TMDB API integration, minimalist UI, and a Git-style contribution graph for tracking. It realizes this is a complex, multi-step task involving front-end UI UX, an external API, and multiple components. Its plan is pretty detailed. It starts by reading files like package.json, app slash page.tsx, app slash layout.tsx, and app slash globals.css. This is critical for understanding the existing project context. Then, you see it call OMO agent with subagent type librarian. The prompt explicitly asks the librarian to research the TMDB API for authentication, key endpoints, rate limits, and response structures. Notice the run in background equals true flag. This means our librarian agent is now off doing its homework, and Sisyphus can continue planning without waiting. This parallel processing is a huge win. While the librarian is busy, Sisyphus continues refining its to-do list. Delegate UI UX styling to front-end UI UX engineer. Now, watch what happens. It starts writing some initial TypeScript types, like Watched Movie and TMD Response. But then, bam! A background task completed notification pops up for the TMDB API research. This is the librarian finishing its work, providing the necessary context. Sisyphus immediately incorporates this. It also detects some unnecessary comments and lint issues, which is thanks to the configured hooks and LSP integration. It goes through types slash movie.ts, lib slash tmdb.ts, and lib slash usewatchmovies.ts, cleaning up comments and fixing small errors. This shows it's not just dumping code. It's actively refactoring and applying best practices. It then proceeds to create the core directory structure using simple mkdir commands. After that, it gets to work on the actual components. It creates movie search, movie card, watched movies list, and contribution graph components. However, a small error pops up. Cannot find module, movie card. This is where the LSP really shines. Sisyphus sees the error immediately because the TypeScript language server is running. It then self-corrects, going back to components, slash index.ts to fix the import path. It also had an unused variable i error in contribution graph.tsx, which it identifies was likely due to a race condition during concurrent file writes, and it fixes that too. This shows remarkable resilience and error recovery. After the components are in place, it updates the main app slash layout.tx.s file changing the metadata title to 
movie tracker, and adding a more descriptive description. It then writes app slash page dot tsx, integrating all the newly created components into the main layout. Finally, it realizes that for the TMDB images to work, next.js needs specific configuration. It reads next.config.ts, creates a .env.example file with the placeholder API key, and then modifies next.config.ts to include the images domain configuration for image.tmdb.org. Then, the delegation happens. You see Sisyphus explicitly say, now delegating UI UX polish for the minimalist aesthetic to the front-end UI engineer. This is our Gemini 3 Pro agent taking over the visual styling in the background. While Gemini is doing its thing, Sisyphus kicks off the npm run build command to verify that the core application compiles successfully. And just like that, the build completes. The movie tracker it generated also looks really unique and good in itself. So, what are my thoughts? First, the good stuff. The dynamic delegation to specialized agents is genuinely awesome. It's like having a miniature dev team. Opus handles the high-level planning and back-end. Gemini tackles the front-end. Sonnet does the research. It matches tasks to the best available models, which theoretically should give you better results and more efficient token usage. The background task execution is a game-changer, allowing actual parallel work. And the integration of LSP for real-time error checking and the TODU continuation enforcer are crucial for making these AI agents truly reliable. It means less babysitting and more confidence in the output. The fact that it caught and fixed its own module import error and even a potential race condition is impressive. However, it's not a perfect silver bullet. While it delegates, the cost still scales. You are running multiple frontier models, so your API bill could add up faster than with a single, cheaper model. However, if you are able to afford all the subscriptions from Claude and OpenAI and Gemini, then you can squeeze out some good results. I think that careful consideration has been put into the token usage aspects of it, and it is recommended that you run it with subscriptions. I think we could plug in things like GLM and stuff. Let me know if you guys want a tutorial on how to edit model configs for it as well. So, there's that. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!